If you're a fan of photo restoration, you may know that Photoshop offers a filter called photo restoration. Only problem, half the time it refuses to work. I'm going to show you why, along with three possible solutions. Now you're most likely to run into problems with the photo restoration filter when your image contains multiple faces, as in the case of this classic 1883 photograph known as the Peace Commissioners, and it features eight fairly notorious gunslingers who ruled over Dodge City, Kansas in the late 19th century, including such luminaries as Bat Masterson and Wyatt Earp. We also have this good guy right here, the one guy without a mustache, Charlie Bassett, who was the marshal, town marshal for years and years, and may have served as the inspiration for Matt Dillon. I'm also going to mention this guy. He's not famous, William Petalon. He was the local pie-eating champion, but he's also missing from many versions of this photo. So this one comes from truewestmagazine.com, but here's the one from the same photograph from the National Archives. Notice it's in terrible shape. Of course, you're seeing that, but also it's the same sitting. Everybody's in exactly the same positions except for the pie eater. He's been erased away. So we have some clumsy edges along Neil Brown right here, as well as Bat Masterson. Here's my favorite weird detail. In indication of image editing to this day, the slightly rounded corner right there should be nice and sharp. It's rounded instead. So, you know, these problems have plagued us since the beginning of photography. Anyway, I'm going to start with this flat version of the image and I'll go to the filter menu and choose neural filters, which is the home of the photo restoration filter. Now, right away, we're gonna see highlights around all eight of the faces, which is generally speaking, really great news. Notice if I turn on skin smoothing, that I have this pop-up menu of the various faces, which is ever so cool. I don't want that in this case because this uh, the skin the skin is not a problem where this image is concerned i'll turn that off and i'll turn on photo restoration now the rectangles do go away but photo restoration is still seeing those faces and the fact that we have so many faces can actually prove to be a detriment now notice that we have three slider bars photo enhancement which is currently turned on because it's set to 50 and then enhanced face and scratch reduction because they're both set to zero, they're turned off. And we've got this progress bar because it takes a moment after all for this, for this filter to preview. And once it completes, we have a very subtle effect. This is before, this is after, clicking on this little icon right there. So not a lot going on. If I wanted to enhance the various faces, all six of them, all eight of them, pardon me, you don't have control over which faces, in other words, you enhance. It's just going to be every single face in a photograph. I'm going to invoke a progress bar once again. But once it completes, I'm not seeing any enhancements and that's because the filter has failed. Notice this message right here. We've temporarily disabled this filter. I guess it's Adobe because of an error. You haven't violated any rules. It's nothing like that. The filter hasn't really technically broken. It's just that it can't see one or more of the faces. And so notice if I want the filter to succeed, I need to take the enhanced face value back down to zero. Notice that message goes away. I can even take scratch reduction all the way up to a hundred. At which point we are seeing a very significant change. So this is before and this is after. That's great, but we're not able to enhance the faces. So that's solution number one. If you run into problems, take enhanced face down to zero. You may need to you know, kind of mess around with the photo enhancement option as well. I don't want this effect, so I'm just going to cancel out here. So we can take a look at solution number two, which is to figure out which of the faces is giving you troubles. And this is kind of tedious, by the way. It's, it's foolproof. It will work, but it does take a hot moment to figure it out. And so what you need to do is just basically create a document with all the faces in it is what I've done. And then I'll go up to the filter menu and choose neural filters once again. So we're looking at William Harris this time around and I'll turn on photo restoration. I want you to see that photo enhancement this time around is set to 50, just like before, but enhanced face is also set to 60. And that's because 
Photoshop is aware that this time it's going to get it right. And sure enough, we have an enhanced face as we're seeing right here. Whether you like it or not, it's immaterial at this point. I just want you to see it's happening. So this is before, this is after. See those tiny little mustache hairs? They're all there. They're all enhanced. The same with his eyes and his eyebrows and so forth. In any event, I'd go ahead and click OK in order to accept that change. And then I'd switch. Notice that it goes ahead and deselects the image. I hate that. So I, it selects the image that is all deselected. And then I'll switch to Luke Short right here. And what I'd like to do is reapply that filter just by choosing the first command. Up here at the top of the filter menu, we're seeing recent filters up here at the top now. But the very top one is the one I want. And it will take a moment to apply. Or in my case, not. It actually just did work. We just didn't see any difference. Notice under the edit menu, undo neural filters. That would undo what I just did, which was ultimately nothing, right? I made no difference. And so if you want to see what's at work here, what's really happening, press the Alt key, Option key on the Mac, and choose neural filters once again right there at the top of the filter menu. That'll force a display of photo restoration, which is set to the same values, photo enhancement 50, enhanced phase 60. We're going to see a progress bar. And a moment later, we'll see nothing happen. But this time, at least you know that we've temporarily disabled this filter because of an error. And by we, I mean not me, of course, Adobe. Well, nobody's done anything. The filter has decided to do this on its own. The problem is, of course, solution number one. Take enhanced face down to zero, and then you will see a difference. So this is before, and this is after. But in any event, I'm going to cancel out because I've gone, I've gone ahead and done all this in advance. I've marked this Luke Short layer right there is red, just so I can remember that it is the outlier. There, there's Matt Masterson. He isn't corrected very well. I would say this is a pretty bad correction on the part of the filter. There's the pie-eating guy and so forth going up the list. Everybody else, including Charlie Bassett, worked. Whether they worked well or not, this is, of course, you know, Wyatt Earp. Whether they worked well or not is, is your call. A lot of mustache hair is going on, so we, we have a lot of detail there. But the only guy, I just want to make it clear, just one guy didn't work, and that was Luke Short. And that's enough to ruin everything. So what is solution number two? Having figured out that he's the problem, you've got to blot him away. And so first thing you want to do is make a duplicate of this layer because you don't want to ruin the original. I'll press Control Alt J, Command Option J on the Mac to jump a copy and I'll just go ahead and call it Restore, let's say, click OK. And then what you have to do, you have to turn off the original image, turn off the background. And because you, even though there's the filter can only really technically work on one layer at a time, it can see every layer in the image. It, it's, it sounds like a wonderful mystical thing. It's actually a giant pain in the neck. Now I'm going to switch to the elliptical marquee tool. And the reason I'm doing this is just so I have a very basic shape right here that I'm going to draw over Luke's face and I'm going to fill it with black by pressing Alt Backspace Option Delete on the Mac. Yes, you have to do blot out the face. You can't just mask it away. You can't just deselect it because the filter will see it. You have to make it not there. Now notice if I go to the filter menu and once again choose, actually, you know what I'll do. I'll press the Alt key, Option on the Mac, and choose Neural Filters from the top of the list. That way I force the display of the dialog box right here and I switch to Photo Restoration automatically and I bring back those two settings. So very important. Photo Enhancement 50, Enhance Face 60. You got to wait out the progress bar. Real quick, want to take your archival photograph and make it more sharply defined still? Better yet, want to try your hand at the same image that I'm working on? Well then join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And now, back to making photo restoration work reliably in Photoshop. But then a moment later, we actually have enhanced faces. Notice that we don't have the warning. So this time it did apply. And if you want more face enhancement, you can just go ahead and crank that value all the way up to its maximum of 100. And then you can see that we have lots of enhanced faces going on which can be a great thing. It may be what you want, in which case, assuming it is, click OK in order to uh, apply that change. Now, the obvious problem here, not only is the image selected, why? Why, Adobe? Anyway, 
I'll just go ahead and zoom back in. The obvious problem is that we have this weird sort of blackish now ellipse over Luke Short's face. And so what I'm going to do is select a larger region. That's why I used a circle, just so it'd be, you know, kind of a minimal intrusion instead of brushing over it. But you got to you got to actually obliterate the darn thing. Then turn on the background so that we're seeing it and then press the alt key option on the Mac and click on the add lay layer mask icon down here at the bottom. And that will mask that blot away and we can see the original face, albeit not enhanced. So that is solution number two. I hope you enjoy that one. It is, as I say, not the most convenient solution on the block, but it will work. So you just got to figure out which is the offending face. Now, here is solution number three, the fun solution if it works. The first step is to go into the filter menu and choose this guy right here, convert for smart filters. Tells me that it's going to make a smart object. That's what I want. This way I can apply photo restoration as an editable smart filter and I'll have a filter mask as well. As you'll see, that's going to serve us very nicely. Now I'll press the Alt key, Option key on a Mac and go to the filter menu and choose Neural Filters because I have the Alter Option key down. That's going to force the display of this dialog box and automatically select photo restoration set to those same settings right there. So photo enhancement 50 enhance phase 60. A moment later, I can see that sure enough, the filter has once again failed. So here's the solution. If it works, once again, I stress, crank the, the scratch reduction value up. Doesn't necessarily have to be 100, but very high is a good idea. Now, even though the progress bar is, is going away right there, it's not going away, it's, it's persisting. It's telling me I have 20 seconds or more. Even though it's at work, I can still modify the settings. Now I'm interrupting the fact that it's going to fail once again, in which case what you do is you take down the photo enhancement value. This doesn't always work, but oftentimes it does. And a good place to start is at 30. I don't know why that often works, but in my experience, it often does. And so notice the progress bar has cleared and we're not seeing any failure notifications. So everything's working as desired. We have a lot of scratch reduction, as you can see, and we also have a bunch of enhanced faces. I'm going to crank that up. No sense in being subtle where this effect is concerned. I want to see some extra crunchy faces all the way around, including even where Luke Short is concerned. Notice he worked this time just by some coincidental sort of combination of these various values. So play around, see what works for you. I'm going to go ahead and set output to smart filter. Click OK. That way this is an editable smart filter. More to the point, I'll go ahead and change my zoom a little bit here. I want you to see what happens if I turn the filter off. Don't turn it off down here. That, that will d d kind of mess up the filter and you'll have to reapply it. You'll have to double click on it in any case. Just turn it off here. Just turn off all the smart filters, in other words. And you'll see a bunch of pocket watches come back. Notice right here. And this guy's got some, uh, Frank McLean or whatever his name is. We, Bat Masterson has some. This guy, Watt Earp, has some and so forth. So well, pocket watches were all the rage. We don't want to get rid of that jewelry. So what I need to do, notice it does go away as soon as I turn the smart filters back on. But we have a filter mask. So I'll click in it to make it active, very important. Then switch to the brush tool right here, which you can get by pressing the B key. And notice that black is my foreground color. That's what I want. If not, you could just swap them like so. And then make your brush a little bigger and just go ahead and paint back in all of that jewelry, all those chains that are at work throughout there. I don't think he's got too much, but uh, Mr. Harris does. I don't know about uh, you know, uh, Luke Short is pretending he's a poor man, I guess. Oh, look, the hand right there. Bat Masterson's hand is coming back at as well. And that way we've got everything we would possibly need out of a live dynamic application of the photo restoration filter.
And that's it. I mean, one day maybe Adobe will fix things, but in the meantime, those are three ways to fix it on your own. And don't forget, for still more real-world restoration advice, join me at patreon.com slash deeknow. And then go to deek.com and sign up for my newsletter, not to mention right here at YouTube, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.